Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode in my Unreal Engine 4 tutorial series. In this episode we're going to do yet another type of door uh, for our game. And the door we're going to make today is a hinge door. And this hinge door works as you would expect. But the beauty of it is you can approach it from either side and the hinge will work both sides. The reason why you want to do this, even though it's not entirely realistic, is that so the player doesn't have to get in the way of the door opening or closing. Okay, so this is what we're going to make, be making today. So the hinge door, we're going to start off with a duplicate of our door button that we did before. Um, so if I right click and create a, uh, a duplicate of this, go door underscore hinge. So you have code similar to what we've made before, where we have uh, an enable input and a disable input going into our door animation uh, timeline. So the hinge door works fundamentally different from the other doors we made because we've made sliding doors up till now. So we're going to work on something a bit different this time. And that is we're going to add and change the way the timeline works. So for this, I'm going to get rid of the door animation timeline. And I'm going to go to the viewport. And the way this works is I'm not going to create an animation for it. I'm going to use exactly what we've been doing so far, but I'm going to create a hinge for this door mesh. And that is going to be made using a scene component. So if you go to the add components on the left hand side and search for scene, you'll see it underneath the utility section, scene component. Now a scene component is just a component which has a transform associated to it. So uh, location, rotation and scale. Okay, that's all it is. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to name it hinge. And I'm going to move it into the location of where I would expect the hinge to be. Okay. Then I'm going to drag my door mesh and attach it to my hinge. So my hinge is there and my door mesh is here underneath it. Meaning it's a child of the hinge. What that means is that anything that happens to the hinge will happen to the door. So for example, if I rotate the hinge, I get the hinge effect on the door which is what I want to achieve. Everything else we're going to leave exactly the same. Next, I'm going to go into my event, uh, event graph, sorry, and we're going to create a new timeline. So go from pressed to add timeline. And this one's going to be called, uh, we'll do door swinging. And I'm going to open this up and I'm going to create a float. So click on float here. And I'm going to say door angle. And from here, I'm going to shift click a point. So this is nothing new we've done before. So you shift click to add points to this timeline. And I'm going to set it at zero, zero to begin with. And then I'm going to shift click again to add a second point. And with a time of, let's say, uh, one second make it nice and quick and a value of 90. now i'm going to click these little two buttons here to bring it to view so this door is going to hinge and swing open at between 0 and 90 over one second i'm going to change the length of it here to one second as well so it doesn't go on for too long and you may want to if you highlight all these right click and choose auto and you get this nice smoother movement when the door opens and closes I'm going to click compile and then I'm going to go back to my event graph. So the timeline, I said I'm not going to go into too much because we did do it in the previous episode. So if you want to check that out, check out in the first doors episode. Uh, you can learn about it in much more detail there. So this timeline is going to output now that track as a door angle here. So rather than using a door mesh and setting its rotation, uh, location, I want to delete that, drag the hinge out, and I want to set its relative rotation. plug it into the update. The new rotation, I'm going to right click and split it. Now I've got three floats because the rotator is made out of three floats. I've got roll, pitch and yaw. If you want to always double check, just go to the hinge and you see it's the blue one here. That is the z-axis because it's blue and if you look down here you can see the, the key x is red, y is green and z is blue. So I want to change the z-axis which is the yaw. So door angle goes into your. 
and then our disabled input is going to go into reverse. So this isn't com this is not complete yet, but I'll show you what we've got so far. So let me just remove my older one, and let's put in our new one, and let's show you how this works. Push E, and you can see it opens. Okay, I go through it, and when I leave it, it closes. If I push E on this side though, you can see it whacks me in the face. Okay, which is not what I want to do. So it can cause issues. What I want it to do is open up based on which way I'm approaching the door. Because if you're playing a game and you open a door, suddenly you have to walk back from opening the door. Sure, it's realistic, but it's not what you want. I and mean, if you walk back to get out of it, you're going to step out of the trigger box, which is not what you want. Okay, it just breaks the gameplay and it takes away the fun of it. So we're going to break open the door from the direction that we're going in. So how do we do that? Well, if we go into our door hinge here, when I hit the E key, I'm going to figure out which direction I am approaching the door from. So let's just do it. Let's do it. Come on. So get player character. This will return the player character. And from there, I'm going to get its rotation. Get active rotation. I also want to get the active rotation of the door. So just type in get rotation. Get active rotation. And you've got these two things here. From each one of these, you want to get the forward act vector, and that will tell you which way each is facing. So this will tell me which way the door is facing, which will tell me which way the character is facing. And then you want to do a dot product. So a dot product, if I go type in dot, and hook it up like so, this is going to return the these two vectors are uh, basically how similar they are okay if they're if they're the same it will return positive one if they're completely different they'll be negative one okay um it, that's essentially what it's best used for the dot product you can do it for other things but mainly use it for this sort of thing to work out how similar two values are so this will return positive one or negative one and, vari uh, and variations between based on how similar these two values are so i want to store this as a uh, as an integer okay I want to round it up to either minus one or one so if we go out of our uh, value here I go round and now I've got an integer so it's round to a nearest integer so this will output at minus one zero or one and the round value I want to store as a variable so promote to variable and we want to connect up to just after we push the E key so when we push the E key we want to store which way we're coming at the door from so the way this works is, uh, it'd be better if I actually do a print string as well, so you can see it actually in action, the dot product that is. Uh, let's name the variable. I'll just call it direction. And click compile. So when I push the E key, you can see it's one, okay? Because me and the door are facing the same way, which is north, okay? If I do it this way, it says no, make ne negative one because I'm facing south and the door is facing north. Okay, complete opposites. So now how to translate that into the door's movement. So now we've got this set direction as a variable. After we get the door angle from the timeline, we can actually multiply this by that direction. So multiply it by a int. And the integer is that direction value we just got. Like so. Now, when doing this, you may have to tweak that a little bit. So it opens up correctly that way, and it's correctly this way. Now, sometimes, depending on how you set this up, your door hinge may do the opposite. It may run, it may open towards you instead. If you want to fix that, all we have to do is multiply this value by negative one. Uh, sorry, an integer. Uh, multiply by integer minus one. Okay, you just do do that instead. If that if it's coming towards you instead, which is not ideal, you want to flip it. You want to go negative one. It all depends on where you place your hinge. If you put it on the right hand side or left hand side, so this will flip it so it rotates the correct way. 
So this one will now open always towards me. Like so. Yeah. So mine doesn't need that, so I'm going to give it that negative one. Let's plug in my direction, like so. And there you go. A hinged door that will always open away from you. Which is good if you're running away from enemies and want to blast them in the face. If you like this episode, please leave a comment below and like this video, and please consider subscribing to the channel. And if you want to support me even further, head over to Patreon, just like these people have, and support me for as little as a dollar a month, and you can get access to all these videos nice and early before anyone else, as well as access to my Discord and many other benefits uh, up to you, really. So, thank you very much, and uh, hopefully I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.